It's fall, and you know what that means? It's the time of year to rewatch a show to see what happens when people who probably shouldn't have had kids have kids, and the cycles that happen after that, but the rich white person version. In all seriousness though, I love Gilmore Girls, it's one of my favourite shows. Doesn't mean that you can't critique something and also analyse it, because that's what we love to do, and that's why I've gathered you here today for this very important town meeting. It's time to be transported to the Hallmark movie-esque small town full of eccentricities. Babette eat oatmeal. Huh. Yeah. I'm keeping it real. ...and community, and two girls who stand out above everybody else that the entire town adores. It's a big one today, so get your coffee, or if you're like me, non-caffeinated beverage, because you've got a literal broken heart, and let's get cosy and see the perfect 2000s analogues that really do encapsulate all of the fears that we had at the time. And uh, it's time to get analytical and cosy. I mean, what better way to spend a day, am I right? And if you haven't been able to tell already, there are spoilers throughout this entire video. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Wow. What? Behold my future. In my opinion, one of the biggest reasons why we keep on coming back to this show is because it actually accurately portrays like mother-daughter dynamics in a more honest way. Incredibly witty, incredibly cutting, but more honest way. And it's something which not many shows, especially at the time, were actually doing. Also, oh, I'm a villain now, is that it? And they had fully flawed characters and actually allowed those flaws to be on full display, even if the audience didn't like it because, oh, I'll tell you what I got. We all get angry sometimes watching this show, don't we, at some of the actions they take, but also for the characters it makes sense, and let's have a quick introduction to the top three. First off, you have Emily. Funny, isn't it? What's funny? How nicely you seem to be fitting into the world that you ran away from. She represents a judgmental, prudish, traditional mother type who has so much classism coming out of her ears, it's honestly a surprise that she doesn't expect red carpet to be rolled out everywhere that she goes. She uses money to be able to have a relationship with people. Nothing's actually done through kindness, it's done through calculation of how can you serve me and this is how I can have power over you. That's the condition. If you agree, you come to dinner tomorrow night and leave here with a check. Otherwise, I'm sorry, we can't help you. And then, lo and behold, she has the kind of daughter that no mother of her stature actually wants, Lorelai. The girl who got pregnant at 16 and out of wedlock. For that class level? Oof. So, of course, as Emily does, she tried to control the situation and force Lorelai to actually marry Chris, the other person who was at fault here. But, of course, most of the blame goes on the girl, doesn't it? And so what does Lorelai do? She runs away and lives in effectively a shack because she'd rather live there than anywhere close to her family. And because of this one girl's actions, the Gilmore name is forever tarnished and they spend the rest of their lives trying to repair their reputation. It doesn't matter if something actually hurts Lorelai at all, it matters about the reputation. The very Gilmore name was being attacked. I will not stand for that, not under any circumstances. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter why you did it. Yes, it does matter why I did it. It matters greatly. Therefore, you get this independent to a fault mother who made it her entire mission to go against traditional expectations. Your father was a Yale man. Well, we want Rory to be whatever kind of man she wants to be. <laughs> That's enough jokes for this evening, Lorelai. Sorry. Because her childhood was so stifling, she now proudly embraces any possible quirk that she can have. And it also means that she raised Rory more like her best friend than her actual daughter. It's all about protecting Rory, not just from bad influences around her, but also from the manipulative tactics of her own parents, or Rory's grandparents. And we also can't forget protecting herself from hurt and romantic relationships. Lorelai runs away quickly and often. Honestly, it's like she creates problems to try and keep people at arm's length. Even all of these years later, she is still so scared of feeling trapped, just like she did when she was a child. Take her first serious relationship, Max, for example. She was so scared of real intimacy that she kept on creating problems and actually actively kept him away. Like, why on earth would you as an engaged woman not actually cut a key for your partner to be able to access your home, which you're meant to be living in together? Oh wait, is it because you haven't actually thought this through and thought about your life together and how you could actually mesh your life together? Oh my goodness. And then of course we have the fan favourite, the gruff, I'll fix everything in your life, Luke Danes. This man held a torch for her for how many years, Luke? kept this in your wallet. Eight years. Eight years. And then early on in their relationship, she decides to start lying to him. I shouldn't have lied about where I was last night. I I'm over 19 and lying to my boyfriend about stuff that's wrong. Lorelai, you should check out today's sponsor, the app for couples, Paired. I've spoken about them before and I still use the app, so when they asked if they could sponsor another video, I was like, definitely, yes. 
It's a relationship care app which has games, quizzes, and exercises you can do to strengthen your relationship with your partner. And it's all backed by experts. It is such a useful tool for creating space to have open communication. Which, let's be real, all of the Gilmore girls could desperately use. I'm sorry, did I hear from you at all this summer? Did I just happen to miss the thousands of phone calls you made to me, or did the postman happen to lose all those letters you wrote to me? It allows you to ask questions in your own time and space so you can think about things before broaching the topic. And you don't have to be an old married couple like Brandon and I as a helpful tool at any stage of a relationship. Click my link in the description box or pin comment below so you can get a 7 day free trial and 50% off Pair Premium. Thanks again to the Paired app for sponsoring this video and let's move on to Rory. Hey Grandma! She has lived with you too long. Honey, lose the bib and the taco and put your shoes on. Come back out, let Grandma take the pretty picture. Okay. Lorelai's teenager, who still has flaws but is perceived to be the perfect girl. At least by her mother, her grandparents, her entire town even, to the point where she doesn't even have to face reality or consequences for her actions very often at all. My little girl has to come home and find your heinous letter in Dean's jacket. Look, we're in the street. You little monster. Hey! Pull back, lady. There aren't hundreds of other boys in the world. You have to go after her husband. Okay, stop attacking my daughter right now. You're upset. I get it, but you do not do this. Lorelai never wanted to recreate the sort of environment that she grew up in, so she's actually raised Rory to be more like her best friend than anything else. Rory is our ideal analogue of the 2000s. She's smart and driven. She's interested in boys, but she's not at all slutty. She's shy, and she actually pushes boys away all the time because they always come flocking to her. It's like she's got this little beacon over her head. And the extra special thing about Rory is that she actually trains boys to be better. She's studious, but not like a bully in school like Paris was. And she's also pretty cowardly, she runs away a lot. And be real, you have to admit that Rory was absolutely parentified, with Lorelai often saying things like this. I have someone to complain to when life sucks, or work sucks, or just everything sucks. I have someone I can talk to. Yeah? Who? Oh, Shecky, you kill me. Uh, that is not the role the kid should be having. Please go watch this video for more. I find your mother completely fascinating. Funny, so does she. It's almost more like having a big sister. And you like her, don't you? She's my best friend. Oh, truly, completely fascinating. As a teenager, nothing speaks to my experience watching this show and my admiration for these girls and how much I wanted to be like them better than this scene. So, that's how you look when you've just woken up? Um, yeah. Nothing in my life is fair. Trust me, I do not wake up like this. Again, I reiterate, I love this show, but it really is the centre point of N-Log celebration. Rory and Lorelai are the OG cool girls of the 2000s. They were peak attainable I wanna be her girls. These two are beloved by everybody, even when they act badly. They're effortlessly cool, even if in reality it's actually calculated. This says, hello, I'm hip and cute, but also relaxed since this is something I just threw on, even though it looks fantastic on me. And yes, even Rory, for all of her shyness, she was the peak analogue of the 2000s. Lorelai was definitely more of like a manic pixie sort of version, and I also, I just need to defend um, Lorelai for a second because I've read in a whole lot of Reddit threads that people don't like Lorelai, and um, she reminds me a lot of one of my best friends, so mm -mm, no, no hate on Lorelai, I love her. <laughs> and come on, when watching this show, you wanted Lorelai to be your mum, don't lie. Someone who doesn't mind you having a boyfriend. Sweetheart, the whole town is watching you. That girl in there is beloved around here. You hurt her, there's not a safe place within a hundred miles for you to hide. She throws the exact kind of parties that you want, she defends you constantly. She goes above and beyond to make you smile and to make your entire life fun. Sure, she's not the most responsible person. One of us has got to do laundry tonight. Why? Because I haven't had any clean underwear for three days. So right now under your skirt you're wearing? Not underwear. Mom! It's kind of nice actually. Breezy. My role model, ladies and gentlemen. But she puts Rory first all the time and even faces her fears and actually goes and begs for money to make sure that Rory could have the best opportunities in life and go to Chilton, which would mean that she'd have a higher chance of getting into her dream school, Harvard. And actually, when it comes to Harvard, Lorelai wasn't the one that was actually pressuring her to go to Harvard. And she does check in with Rory constantly, just try and say, is this what's making you happy? I don't want to be that kind of mother that pressures you. I'm not doing this because of you. But if you are, you don't have to. I know that. I'll still love you, even if you can't support me in my old age in the fabulous manner to which I plan on growing accustomed. I'll remember that selfless gesture, thank you. I read all of your comments and responses to my surveys and I know that having this sort of parent would have made a huge difference to you. <laughs> Both of these women have men attracted to them like moths to the flame. Even the same guy in the first episode. 
My daughter. You're... Are you my new daddy? You want to know the reason why Lorelai broke her leg? It was because she was in yoga class, but she was really happy about it because... Good thing was that I brought the smug blonde pretzel chick down with me. There's the end log that we know and love. It's always about a differentiation from others with them, whether about their intelligence and obscure references they make all the time, to their style, to their eating habits, which we'll be getting to later. Throughout the entire show, Rory and Lorelai get played against other characters to just show exactly how different they are and how they're not like everybody else and how other girls are just beneath them, really. Look at Rory's coming out, for example. I can't believe we have an hour and a half. I know, I'm never gonna be ready in time. Only shallow girls will be behaving like this. Rory brings a book with her. Oh my god, is this your best court? Yeah, it is. You are totally getting married. <laughs> But Rory, she's really focused on going to Harvard, you see. And then, of course, Emily has to cut in with a line like this. It should have been you up there. Nothing's turning out the way it was supposed to. She's always ready with a knife as Emily. Not only is Rory often painted directly against other girls, sometimes she actually does it herself. You remember that little crush that she had on Jess, for example? That girl isn't even his type. And Rory, what are you doing? This is when she was actually still with Dean, by the way. And by the way, bloaty is not a word. There's bloated, there's bloating, but no bloat. Thanks, it's fascinating. Well, for you, how ice is made is probably fascinating. See ya. Shane was a blonde girl that Jess was dating, and she was painted to be super trashy, not only by Rory, but also by Lorelai. That girl's a freak. And actually, blonde girls got a lot of hate in the show, but again, this is the 2000s. 2000s misogyny, as I've well established over all of my videos, is peak. And what can be more like N-logs than hating cheerleaders? When Lane actually becomes a cheerleader because it's something that she wanted to try out, she wanted to do. Rory's reaction to this? You just had the urge to stand on top of another girl's shoulders? Don't be like that. Like what? Like you're being, it makes it impossible to tell you. And this is exactly why I call Rory and Lorelai N-logs, because they're doing things on purpose to be against like what other women do, or what other girls do. Lane, however, does things because she genuinely enjoys them. Like the reason that she wants to know so much about music is because it's her biggest passion. She loves it so much. It's like a challenge to her to learn as much as possible, not just to try and set herself apart from other people, like the way that was illustrated with this. In sync or 98 degrees? Oh, uh, in sync or 98 degrees? What kind of sick joke is this? I don't think I could choose. Well, what about that other group, the Backside Boys? Why does Rory even check with Lane about what her answer should be? <laughs> Lane did things in order to have an achievement, whereas Rory did them in order to have a differentiator. And what blonde lady gets played against Lorelai? Sherry. Shane, Sherry, what's with the sh names, Amy Sherman Palladino? Sherry kind of forces Lorelai to join in on the festivities of a baby shower, and uh, this is how they react to it. Hi, this is Sherry Timsdale. Looks like there's a tie up on the boulevard. They appear to be moving every building in Harvard University, so now it's just 1.3 miles from my house. Nice job, guys. You're awful. Oh, and lots of cars stopped at a blue light at Garvey Avenue. Why a blue light? Well, because blue's the new red. The games begin. Games. Yes. Susan, help me move the couch. Mm -hmm. Move the couch. Bless you for being here. Up, up. And also, this line gets said. She's going to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you and Christopher are like a poster for Aryan breeding. What in the red flags? She's doing the same thing you did. No, she's not. She's gonna get pregnant. No, she's not. She's gonna ruin everything just like you ruined everything. No, she's not. No, she's not. No, she's not. You want to talk about the real fear of the 2000s? Having a teenage daughter who's pregnant. Did the messaging of sex ruining your life go completely over your head when you watched the show? Because it didn't for me. Don't believe me? Watch the clips. You are going on the pill. What? You are not getting pregnant. I'm not sleeping with Dean. Damn it! What happened to all that stuff you said to Grandma? What happened to trusting me? Where did all that go? Well, I think it's back on Patty's yoga mats. Lorelai had such a strong fear about Rory repeating Lorelai's mistakes as a teenager. She was so constantly worried about making sure that her legs were closed that she went to attack any boy that she was interested in, whether it's Dean or Jess or Logan, whoever. Speaking of Lorelai, throughout the entire show, they keep on peppering in these scenes where she's reflecting on things that she could have done. If she hadn't gotten pregnant, then she could have gone to Harvard. She could have had all of this wonderful stuff. She she could have been with Christopher. She could have had all of these opportunities. And the constant jibes from Emily saying, oh, should have been you. Throughout the show, as Rory gets the same points as Lorelai when Lorelai got pregnant and had to have a baby and her quote whole life got ruined, you'd instead see Rory actually succeeding and going and hitting all of these wonderful milestones and having everybody be so proud of her. Whereas Lorelai's reality back then, that wasn't actually a happy one at all. I can't imagine having a baby at 16. Well, then keep your knees shut. Very nice. 
Do you think your mom is sorry she got pregnant so young? Of course she is. Why, thank you. But I really do like how they included in the show why Lorelai always has to be on the defensive because when she gets invited to actually speak to her old high school about her business and, you know, teaching the kids on how to run this stuff, but all the kids are actually interested in asking about uh, how she got pregnant at 16 and does she regret it and all of the other stuff that goes along with that. And then Lorelai gets painted to be a bad example. Did you drop out when you got pregnant with Rory? No, technically I didn't drop out. I, uh... I kept going as long as I could while I was pregnant, which I would recommend to any girl. Not the getting pregnant part. And then you get all of these gap mothers ganging up on her, saying that she's a disgrace. Sounds like you just flaunted your mistakes. Now, hold on. You have no right to judge me. All I said was that for my particular circumstances, things worked out okay. I advocated nothing to them. You're all acting like I, I walked into that room tossing condoms in the air. You might as well have. Also, side note, did they go to the same wig maker as, like, Nicole Kidman's in her latest movie? Because... Yuck. And then you have the most obvious example with Paris, who when she actually tells Rory, see what Lorelai actually says. I've got the good kid. And not only that, but she also doesn't get into Harvard, the school which she has been basically begging to get into since she was, what, like eight years old maybe, doing volunteer work, doing all sorts of extracurricular to try her hardest to get in. I'm not going to Harvard. I got the tiny envelope. Oh, and she also gets publicly humiliated on C-SPAN. I am not going to Harvard. I had sex, but I'm not going to Harvard. Okay. That's the price you pay, girls. Keep your legs shut. Oh, 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 wait, one more thing. On Professor Asher Fleming, oh my goodness, this was handled in the absolute worst way possible. And this is what I mean when I say about, like, 2000s fears coming to life, because at no point in any of this were people actually concerned about Paris. It was all a shame on Paris. And, oh my goodness, what about his reputation? That's what you care about? The 60-year-old being with how old was she? 19, maybe? It would be one thing with Rory acting like this, but with Lorelai? Wow, I can't believe Paris is doing an older man. 60-60? Mom! I'm sorry, it's just that now I know who Woody Allen's next leading lady is going to be. And it's so annoying. Nasty. I did not like the mishandling of all of this. Oh, 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 one more thing. Lane. The worst done by character out of everybody, and I love Lane. I'm a strong Lane defender, okay? After her first time, which she didn't even enjoy, she got pregnant with twins. To this guy. You ask, I will obey. Super. I'm out. And people often cite this as Rory's downfall. And look at what she'd just done. Well, and also with a married man. And this is where she, of course, runs away yet again. Because she can't face the consequences of her actions. Because, you know, Lorelai rightfully calls her out. Well, of all people, the girl who thinks everything through, the list maker, you didn't bother to discuss those things before jumping into bed with a married guy? He's not a married guy. He's Dean. My Dean. He's not your Dean. He's Lindsay's Dean. You're the other woman. See what I mean? Your life just gets worse if you don't keep your legs closed. <gasps> hey! What? After all you've been through tonight and I come in here and find you eating like that? There you go. Oh, ice cream! Oh, I'm right behind you! How could they possibly eat more? kind of surprised. I know, they're bottomless pits. Being fat is bad, but also the pursuit of health is too. I'm sure you've seen this video from me where I've actually used the ballerina example, so I'm not going to be repeating it in here. It's a well-known fact that the Gilmore girls love to eat, and that's something which most girls don't do. It's just another way that they set themselves apart. And also, they love to eat junk food. At least eat the carrots in the soup this time, not just the noodles. I promise. Eat my carrots. Apparently maturity is extremely overrated in your universe. They don't even know how to cook. This is used as a differential because you know what? Lorelai doesn't know how to cook in the kitchen. She has Max do it for her or Luke do it for her. It's seen as like a feminist sort of whimsical thing as opposed to just not knowing how to behave like an adult. Did you know we had that? Not a clue. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, it's on fire. It's the broiler. Wow. What fallout shelter have you guys been living in? He has much knowledge. People may gawk at them or comment on how much they eat or anything, but it's all done in this sort of way of admiration because, my goodness, they're such petite, beautiful women. Oh, you're too thin as always. But we eat. And you're both too beautiful. Yes, that's true. We often feel guilty monopolizing the amount of beauty we're in possession of. This could feed 12. Excuse me, I've seen you eat. Fine, six. Where did they put it all? My gosh. Maybe they put it all in the fridge because they deal with a lot of food wastage there. My gosh. I mean, we know that they're not like other girls when Dean deigns to even bring a salad over with him when he comes over with the pizza. A salad? Really, Dean? You thought you could feed these two salad and not get this response? Yeah, it's a quaint dish sometimes used to precede large quantities of pizza. 
it's for me. Clearly. And worrying about what you eat gets used against Michelle, I almost think is a way to make him more effeminate, if that's even the right word to use for it. What? What happens if you eat 13 blueberries? Wait, this is a silly conversation. Would you die? Just hand me the plate. Only if you don't count. I won't count. Swear. Raise your right hand and say, may Destiny's Child break up if I count these blueberries. Pick another group. The fact that you had these admired, wanted women actually loving food, enjoying food, relishing it, eating as much as they wanted to, that is actually kind of a positive thing when it comes to all of the diet culture that was around in the 2000s. Oh my god, here. Wow. With a crunch and a zing and a... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> okay, our house is burning down and you can save the cake or me. What do you choose? Well, that's not fair. The cake doesn't have legs. Okay. Have I mentioned how much I'm loving the three-month anniversary thing? I already told hey, her that chocolate I... chocolate chip. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm so full. Why'd you let me eat so much? Yeah, don't blame you. But they are both very slim women and actually, this interview from Amy Sherman Palladino, we have a responsibility to our actors who are here 24 hours a day, who can't eat a pretzel because you have to be perfect and thin and gorgeous in front of the camera, and who have never let us down. You couldn't have them look like Suki, for example. And actually, let's get on to Suki, shall we? I feel like you're hibernating. I'm not hibernating. Yes, you are. Hey, hey, woo, look at this skirt, huh? I'm not hibernating. Then how many dates have you been on? Um, is Suki the duff? Look, I love Suki, she's in my top three favourite Girl One Girls characters, okay? But it's not really like she's actual competition for Lorelai, right? She's like Lorelai's fat, friendly, ditzy friend. The friend that is more neurotic than Lorelai, which is hard to actually achieve, but Suki manages to achieve it. I gave you a good review. I suggest you go home. I don't care about the review. I just, I want you to try this dish with this wine. I'll wait. <laughs> Realistically, in the 2000s, Suki would never be seen to be anything of a romantic threat to someone like Lorelai, right? Everybody knows that. Yes, Suki absolutely does end up in this wonderful relationship with Jackson, and she does some questionable things when it comes to like bodily autonomy and stuff. Ugh, we could go down that road, but we're not going to go there today. But there's never a possibility of actual competition between the two women. And honestly, throughout the show, Suki was there for Lorelai more than Lorelai was there for Suki. Uh, I mean, in terms of a friendship way as opposed to a business way. Suki was always the person going and making sure that Lorelai was okay. She was always going over to her house, making sure that she had stuff whenever Lorelai did some weird and wacky thing. And if we're being honest with ourselves, Lorelai has always seen herself as above Suki. You must really like this guy. When did you become a relationship expert? You haven't been in a relationship in years. Wow. Zero to jackass in 3.2 seconds. That's all right. Your feet hurt. That hurts. And then we have this other example. Profit margins in a new business are slim, Suki. Just stop. Just stop. Now you're talking down to me. I'm not talking down to you. I'm trying to explain. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I don't know why you are, but I don't want to start crying in front of you because it'll just give you one more thing to point at to say, look, she's too emotional. And she's too weak for me to go into business with. You see what I mean? This is kind of why I'm calling Suki the duff. Hi. I'm working. Come on, this is the beginning of a relationship. You're supposed to act stupid. I'll do the chicken dance on my lunch break. Heading back to school? Yeah, sophomore year. Anything you want on the house. I can't believe you won't flirt with me in front of my daughter. She's going to think there's something wrong with me. Please, I got that confirmation letter a long time ago. Let's talk about boys, because that's what people always want to talk about with the show, which is something I find really interesting, because honestly, I find the mother-daughter dynamics and relationships and like those familial cycles, I find that stuff really interesting, you know, like those character studies. But anyway, what team are you on? Who do you honestly think is the best man in the show? And then who do you think is the best person for the characters? Because my favorite in the entire show is Dave. I don't mind wearing a tie. I enjoyed playing those hymns on my guitar, and I really, really want to take your daughter to the prom. Let never day nor night unhallowed pass, but still remember what the Lord hath done. I stayed up all night. I read the entire Bible cover to cover. I don't know what it means. David. You have to tell me what it means. Is it yes? Is it no? I can't feel my right elbow anymore. I'm never going to forgive him for going to the OC because him and Lane were so good together. And then instead of ending up with someone like Brian, who I think she could have actually ended up really well with, she ends up with Zach. Otherwise, we're on about the best men in the show. I, I mean... I've always wanted to say this. Love of my life, let down your lustrous locks. I want to 
jump unless I'm sure somebody's going to catch me. I'll catch you. And if I miss for any reason, I'll sit by your bedside and nurse you back to health. Come on. Um, I absolutely am on Team Max, but not for Lorelai. Lorelai was not ready for him. Lorelai kept on mistreating him. Like I said at the start, she just was not ready. And um, she ran away and treated him terribly. And actually, I'm not really the biggest fan of Luke. He uses violent language a lot. And he is so domineering and makes his mood everybody else's problem all the time. Like, I'm really not the biggest Luke fan. I'm sorry. I know that everybody is all like, well, they won't. They are. They belong together. But uh, I think both him and Lorelai have just a lot of growth, okay, that they both needed to do. And uh, I don't really know if they fully achieved that. And uh, yeah, uh, I said what I said, okay? I said what I said. You can fight with me in the comments. Go off. Bring my engagement up. What do you think you're doing? Working. So you think this is funny, huh? I'm sorry. I thought this was a uniform. It's no woman, actually. You know which one is ours? Definitely has the most personality. Kind of looks like Bjork. That's what we were going for. Yeah. But everyone thinks that the one on the end is going to be the winner. Really? It's so overdone. It changes when it snows. It's it quiet. Everything softens. It's your mother. And then the rain comes. It's time to wrap this video up with a Hello Kitty bow and like bedazzle it or something. Because I've got some final thoughts. Whilst the Gilmore Girls were written to separate themselves by not being like everyone else, not like other girls specifically, the reason that the show still gets revisited so much and discovered by Gen Z and Gen Alpha is because these flawed human beings are being entirely themselves, including 30 plus year old women who would absolutely have a Hello Kitty waffle iron. I've seen so many people talk about how angry they are with Rory, but come on, you would have hated Rory if she was like a Mary Sue like she kind of was in the first few episodes of the show. She's always been flawed. She's always run away from her problems. She's always been a bit more selfish. It's just these are just the things that would naturally happen for the character especially with like the her background and her lack of trust and just admit it if she was this smart, this beautiful and this perfect in all of her relationships you would hate the girl because you'd never be able to compare yourself to her and measure up in any way, shape or form. Instead, what you get to experience is this little feeling of like superiority and, and this other feeling of, what is it? Disappointment. And how does that feel? Lorelai, passing it over to you. It's from my mother. What is it? It's heavy. Must be her hopes and dreams for me. Maybe you're more like Emily than you thought all along. We are best friends first and mother and daughter second, and you and I are mother and daughter always. I wasn't taught to be best friends with my daughter. Even in season one, Rory was running away from her problems when she got into a fight with her mom. Break up, cry, get back together, break up. It doesn't really matter. I'd rather not have to keep track, so tell me when you're down to the final inning. You know what? That is way too snotty a thing, even for alternate universe Rory to say. She went to Lorelai's parents. The place where Lorelai felt the most unsafe is where Rory ran away to, where she kept on running away to. Come on, be real. The pattern was there from the start is all I'm saying. Personally, I prefer watching shows with flawed people in them instead of like watching the Donna Reed show, okay? And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, it's only right to leave the coffee cup and some autumnal leaves, right, as the emoji. I just... <laughs> just makes sense. And thanks again to Pad for sponsoring another one of my videos. Don't forget to check the link in my description box below or the pinned comment so you can get a seven day free trial and 50% off Pad Premium. And an extra special thank you to all of my patrons and especially my Trash Panda enablers. Bear Gitz, Brian Homestead, Carrie Quake, Laura, Mila Gautier, Stella Sapiente, Tammy Poitras, Tim Long, Tonya Banier, Trail Mix 305 and Violet. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you again next time. Bye. What happened? The one on your head, Annie Oakley. It's great, isn't it? Everybody can watch me filming from the street and I feel incredibly self-conscious right now. Boy, with the poodles already.